Hi everyone, it's been a while since I filmed a video so I thought why not jump on for my 2015 favourites and let you know what they are. Now I'm going to split this into two videos, one of them is going to be just purely makeup and then the other one is going to be my other bits and bobs that I think that you should know about. So the first one is obviously going to be makeup because that's what this channel is all about. So let's get started. Throughout the whole of 2015 I started to use a primer which I didn't really do in 2014 and I used loads of different ones obviously to test them out but I found the best one for me was the Rimmel Fix and Perfect Primer. It goes on really easily, it's almost like a moisturiser although I wouldn't use it as a moisturiser and you just put like a pea sized amount on your fingers, rub it in and then just rub it into your all over your face, I usually do, but a lot of people sometimes stick to just the T-zone because that's the area that is most problematic for them. But I just pop it all over the face and I just love the texture and it works really well. So the fact that it is relatively cheap is another amazing thing. There's some really great primers, but they are really, really expensive. So if you find something that's cheaper, then it's always a win. Concealer wise, there is two concealers that have been amazing for me this year. I actually use both of them, one of them underneath my foundation and the other one as a sort of highlight and concealer. So the first one is the Urban Decay Naked Skin. I absolutely love this concealer. The consistency, the texture, everything is amazing about it. I had the lighter one and this is the medium one. In my book it does exactly what it's meant to do. It conceals but without looking cakey. I don't like it to look cakey, but the texture is still quite thick. So you do have to blend it in, which is so easy with this sort of consistency. The second one is Age Rewind by Maybelline. I usually use this as a sort of highlight after my foundation. So I just literally apply it in the triangles and anywhere else that you want to highlight. I mean, the only thing I'm not really keen on is the fact that it has a spongy sort of applicator, but once you get over that, it's, it's really, really good. It is the same kind of consistency to the naked skin, so if you're looking for a sort of dupe, then this could be the one for you. Um, but yeah, easily blendable and still quite thick where it will cover any imperfections. Foundation wise, I'm sure that you can guess one of them, but I have two foundations that I've really been loving in 2015. We'll go for the one that you probably don't know first, the Bourjois Healthy Balance. I hated this when I first tried it, but I have been really loving it towards the end of the year. So, you know, I had to make it. It is for illuminating your skin, so if you have more of an oily skin then you probably won't like this, but in the winter it's perfect because my skin is more to the dry side, so it really did the job throughout the whole of winter and I don't think I used anything but this throughout the whole of winter. My all time favourite is obviously the NARS Sheer Glow. It's one of those things that probably most beauty bloggers say they love. It just blends so easily. The colour for me is absolutely bang on. The consistency is very good for me. It's not too heavy, but it covers you enough to be able to not be worried about any imperfections. Obviously, if you use concealers as well, then you're sorted. If I was gonna go for more of a chilled sort of look or just work where I couldn't really be bothered to put on a full face of makeup, I would just use this L'Oreal CC Cream. It is lovely. I have the anti-dullness one um, for no specific reason really, it was just the one that I thought would work best for my skin tone. Along with concealers and stuff as well, it was a winner. It's very rare that I wear a full face of makeup and contour and highlight and all that sort of things, so I am quite surprised at how many products I have for highlighting and contouring and other various things along those lines. So we will get started. The first one I should have really done before foundations because that's how I use it is the Conceal and Highlight Like a Pro palette from Collections Cosmetic. It has all the different colours in there so you can colour correct basically. So yeah, I have been loving that and I spent pretty much the whole of 2015 trying to find something like this. And I found it in about November time, so I was really happy and because of that, that had to be in here. 
Now onto the real sort of highlighting and contouring. Cream wise, for contour, I am obsessed with the Clinique Chubby Stick. It's basically, like it says, a chubby stick. You can wind it up. I've used this quite a lot and they're it's barely gone down, so that's good for me. I think it's around £20, I'm not sure, but it everything will be either on my blog or down in the description anyway. So yeah, I have been loving this for contour. I don't do very much, so I will just literally do like cheekbones, maybe a bit on the forehead, and if I'm going out, out, maybe my nose. But it works really well, and the fact that you can just do it straight out the stick, and you don't have to use tools to be able to then do it, um, makes it even more appealing for me. Highlight wise, like I said, I use my concealer quite a lot, but I have also been loving two highlighting products, one cream and one powder, just to give that extra sparkle. So the first one is the Body Shop Honey Bronze. So it's literally just a little ball that you just apply. I liked this in the summer because it has more of a, as the name suggests, bronzy sort of highlight. So I really like this in the summer. I actually haven't used this in the winter, but I was obsessed with it all summer and put as much of it on my face as I could. So my winter alternative to that is the powder um, Light Scapade by MAC. I only actually bought this recently, but I've probably used it every single day since I bought it uh, end of November time. It is one of those things, again, that most beauty bloggers absolutely adore. It's quite icy. I've actually got it on today, if you can see. So it is more of a wintry sort of one for me. I probably wouldn't use this in the summer because it does come up quite um, quite bright when you put it against bronzers and things. And finally for highlight and contour, I can't go without mentioning the Barium Chisel Cheeks. It's basically your dummy's guide to contouring. So you've got your flat colour, your bronzing colour and then your highlight colour. I usually put cream underneath and then go for this on top just to set it all in place. But yeah, I love it. I only have one powder that I absolutely adore and it is the NARS Translucent Crystal Powder. I absolutely love it. I don't use it very often as you can probably tell just because it is quite expensive. And if I don't really need to use powder then I don't see the point in whipping this out. I will just use another one which I... I like but I don't really like so yeah definitely in my favourites. Finally for the like face wise I usually use a setting spray and my favourite is the NYX matte finish long lasting setting spray. I adore this stuff it locks in everything and also if you've got quite a powdery finish it sets it all and makes it look more luminous rather than just a flat powder on your face so I really love that and there's nothing really anything more I can say about that. The only thing is it's quite hard to get hold of in the UK. I actually bought this in America and I think you can get it from Amazon. I will again let you know in the description box if that's true. I'm pretty sure you can get it from Amazon but it's a little bit more expensive than if you bought it in the US. So yeah, in love. Obviously brow wise I am going to say the Anastasia Brow Wiz because I love it. The tip is really, really tiny. I don't even know whether you'll be able to see the tip. It's that small. It's so, so tiny. So you can really do hair-like strokes, which I absolutely love. And also the spoolie is amazing. It really gets everything nice and blended and brushes it out lovely. So that is perfect. But again, if I can't really be bothered to do my makeup, this takes quite a lot of time. I will just throw on the Brow This Way by Rimmel and it is basically just a mascara for your eyebrows so it sets it all in place. This one is coloured as well so it gives a little bit of colour to the places where my eyebrows are a little bit sparse and done. It's easy, quick, perfect. Eyeshadow wise there are three palettes which really stick in my mind for the ones that I've used most this year. Um, Singles, I don't really use that often to be honest. I have quite a boring look. I usually stick with something like this. I don't really go over the top a lot unless I'm really going somewhere or it's a fancy dress or something. So I have got quite neutral palettes which if you're a neutral kind of girl you will love. First one is the Collection Nude Palette. It is, like I said, all nudes 
and they are so beautiful, so pigmented and really, really cheap, which is amazing. This is actually my second one. So I've gone through all the colours once. Um, that proves how much I love it. And I would definitely try other palettes from collection just because for the price of them, they are amazing. The next one is the Double Exposure palette by Smashbox. It has some really lovely colours in and I love the fact that you can use them wet or dry so it changes your colours. So there's 14 colours all together um, and obviously you can then use the colours wet and they will become either like shimmery or more intense. There's loads of different ways that they change. So you have double the palette really in one little tiny thing with a lovely little mirror. I won't shine it too much because the lights will come off it. But yeah, it's a brilliant palette. It has the more neutral colours down here to a bit more vibrant up here. I don't really use this side of the palette if I'm honest. I use these sort of colours here. But apart from that, I'm mainly down here. So yeah, I love that palette. I was really happy I bought it because I was um in an for ages whether to get it, but I do, I really love it. And the final one is limited edition, so you probably won't be able to get this anymore because I got it last Christmas. So it's a MAC palette, but the only colour really that I wanted to point out in this whole thing was Kid. That is my absolute favourite transition colour. It's the one that I will use way before anything else in this palette. And I have actually got a backup ready for when this finishes. I love this palette because it's got a lovely little front cover and it's a bit dirty mine though. And obviously and you have your eight colours from shimmery to mattes to create a few different eye looks which is really good. If you follow me you know my signature look is the cat eye, winged eyeliner, whatever you want to call it. So I have two eyeliners that I absolutely love. The first one is the L'Oreal Super Liner Perfect Slim. It's got a really, really, really slim tip so you can really get in there and make your eyeliner perfect, which I do really like this. This is my absolute favourite. Um, it comes out quite black. I didn't actually use it today, but it comes out quite black and it's so easy. I usually just lay the thinner part down and then just go across like that and just flick it out that way. It's so easy to use. So if you're a newbie to eyeliner or you really want to try it, then definitely try this first because the slim little tip makes it so much easier and you'll probably find it a lot easier than using my next product, which is the Super Cat Fat by Soap and Glory. This is very different. It's slanted, if you can see. It's on a slant, but it is much thicker. It's sort of like a felt tip pen. So you do have to be really careful and you have to know what you're doing to be able to use it. But again, it's that's what I use today and everything comes out fine. It's very, very black. The consistency is very good. So yeah, I love that one too. I have been using these two or in combination even uh, for a while now and they, fingers crossed, seem to be doing all right. So hopefully this won't change. The first one is the Joan Collins Mascara. It's called the Class Act and it's in black. It's sort of got a eight figured wand, not noticeably, but it sort of goes in a little bit. And I really love that. The consistency is quite thick, but once you brush it through, it comes out really lovely. It also has lengthening in it. So after a month of using it, your eyelashes are meant to grow, which is brilliant. I actually have noticed that mine have grown, so it must work and it's really easy on my eyes. I have quite sensitive eyes, so it doesn't irritate my eyes, which is my main concern when picking a mascara. But the only thing I find is that it drops throughout the day, so I have used a waterproof mascara on top of it to really lock it in, and the one I love the most is the False Lash Effect from Max Factor. Again, it's not hurt my eyes as of yet, so hopefully it won't, and the only thing I'm not too keen on with this is the brush is very, very thick, so you have to be very, very careful. Um, it goes a bit chubbier on this side, and then obviously this is for your smaller lashes. And it is it is an amazing mascara. I've got both of them on today, if you can't really tell, because I've gone for quite a mild look today. But yeah, it's an amazing mascara. But the only thing I'm not sure about is the thickness of 
the brush. The consistency of the mascara itself is again quite thick but not gloopy which I really love. And the consistency of the actual mascara itself is really good. Again it's more to the thick side but once you brush everything out and sort of make sure it's all even and all that sort of stuff it works really well and it actually locks in my Joan Collins mascara which I really notice if I don't wear it with this. Lips wise I have three products, one of them, well technically I have four products. So the first one is obviously my Vaseline, I absolutely adore it, it does wonders for my lips and I try to use it as often as I can. Lip balm wise um, I love the balmy little dome, I know this got quite a lot of flack um, when it first came out, it's basically just a tiny little dome with lip balm. To be fair, it doesn't last very long. I've only had it about a month and it's probably halfway. So it doesn't last very long, but they are pretty inexpensive, so it's not that bad. They look cool, which is brilliant. I have the mint one and it has worked on my lips. I've actually got it on now. I just wear this a lot now. I don't tend to wear lipstick, which is slightly boring, but, <laughs> but I do just wear this a lot and it sort of looks like a lip gloss, but doesn't have that uncomfortable sticky feeling. But if I do feel like having a little bit of colour on my lips it is always a nude colour pretty much. <laughs> my absolute favourite lipstick is the Charlotte Tilbury Very Victoria. It's just a brownie. A lot of people say to me when I put it on that it's almost purple, it's got like a purple hue to it, but in the actual, uh, what do you call it, bullet, it's not really purpley but if they say that then it must do. So yeah it's just a really browny sort of nude, it's really easy to wear, I wear it with anything basically um, and it just adds a little bit of colour but without adding too much so I love that. And then if I want to spice up a little bit I usually add this into the middle of it so this is a pinky browny colour and I'll just put that in the middle of my lips after putting Berry Victoria on. It gives it a really nice gradient which is really lovely. I will put in a picture now so you can see. Um, so yeah, those combinations and that lipstick by itself, my absolute favourite. And also I like the Revlon Colour Stay Lip Liner. This is just like a really browny colour as well. It is literally called Nude. So yeah, I really like that. I used to put this on then Very Victoria but it comes out very very brown so I decided to just use them individually. But yeah, love this. And finally, another one that probably all beauty bloggers will come up and say for their favourites is the Rimmel Exaggerate in East End Snob. Apparently it is like the Charlotte Tilbury, I think it's called Pillow Talk. I've never used that so I can't really say myself but apparently it is and it is just a lovely pinky colour. Let me just put it on my... that probably should have worked better. It's just a lovely pinky colour. Again, a nude colour so you can wear it with anything but it just gives that little bit of pink when you don't really want to wear a sort of bland brown colour. Love that. Oh, I left out a blusher. So blush wise, natural collection blush, we all know that I absolutely adore this. This one is Dusky Pink and this is actually my favourite now. Pink Cloud used to be my favourite but this one is my favourite now. And again, really cheap, I think they're like £2 and they work really well. The colour payoff is amazing, they last all day so definitely favourite. And to finish up I have four tools which I absolutely love. I wouldn't say couldn't live without but I absolutely love them. So the so, first one is the Multitask Brush by Real Techniques. Sorry it's really dirty, I just used it. Um, it's really fluffy, I usually use it for bronzing up and that sort of stuff. It does a great job for the bronzing and I think it works really well so love that. If I'm going to go for a full on contour then I absolutely love the Bold Metals from Real Techniques 301 which is the flat contour brush I believe. and like the name suggests, it's flat, it's really dense so it really gets the colour in there and you can chisel everything out and then use the flat end to blend it all in properly. So I really love this. Um, I don't use it that often to be honest but I do absolutely love it and when I use it I notice the finish is so much better. Another Real Techniques brush that I absolutely love is the 201. I think it's the pointed crease brush but I use it for my crease anyway. I'll just pop everything in and do it that way. The point makes it so precise 
but then because it goes wider you get a really nice blend as well so I use this a lot and I absolutely adore it then finally I think this will be on most people's favorites is my beauty blender I could not live without this it's so easy. The only thing probably I don't like is that on the go it's not great, but um, I believe they brought out a spray called Reactive or Reactivate, something like that, and you can spray it wet so then you can use it. I sometimes just use my NYX spray anyway if I'm on the go, but yeah, I would just, just soak it in water, wring it out, and then use it if I'm at home. I use this for pretty much everything. I used to just use it for foundation, but now I use it to blend in my concealers, foundation. If things aren't really blending properly after I've finished, I will just go over with my beauty blender and make sure that everything's blended nicely. So I do really, really love this. And I rely on it quite a bit, actually. Makeup wise, that is completely it for 2015. Um, there wasn't a lot there because Towards the second half of the year I didn't really buy a lot, I stuck with what my favourites were and sort of became very stubborn with my face. But yeah, hopefully in 2016 we will have a little rummage through some more stuff and find some new favourites. But yeah, let me know what your favourites were and don't forget to subscribe. I know it's been a while but I will try and upload videos more regularly from now on. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!